In Informatica Developer, you can create a workflow and add a mapping to the workflow when you want to run multiple mappings sequentially. Or you can add a mapping to a workflow when you want to run commands to perform steps before and after the mapping runs. The Data Integration Service uses the instructions configured in the workflow to run the objects. In this demo, we will create, deploy, and run a workflow. The workflow first runs a mapping. Then, it runs a command to print a summary of the mapping run to a text file. We will add the workflow to a sales project that I have already created. Right-click on the project, and then select New Workflow. Enter a name for the workflow. Informatica Naming Convention Guidelines use a WF prefix. You can also add a description. Then, click Finish. The workflow appears under the Workflows category of the project that we are working on, and it is open in the editor. The Open Workflow displays a start event that represents the beginning of the workflow. It also displays an end event that represents the end of the workflow. Let's move the end event to the right in the editor. Next, we add tasks to the workflow. A task is an activity that runs a single unit of work in the workflow. A task can run a mapping, send an email, or run a shell command. We'll add a mapping task that runs a sample mapping during the workflow. In the Object Explorer view, select the mapping and drag it to the editor. The mapping task appears in the editor. By default, a mapping task has the same name as the mapping. On the General tab, enter a name for the mapping task. Informatica Naming Convention Guidelines use an MT prefix. You can also add a description. Notice that the General tab includes a link to the mapping that this task runs. You can click the link to the mapping to open it in the editor. Now we need to configure the mapping task output. Task output is the data that passes from a task into workflow variables. During a workflow run, the Data Integration Service copies the task output values to workflow variables when the task completes. The Data Integration Service can access these values from the workflow variables when it runs additional tasks in the workflow. In this demo, we want to print the is successful and number of target rows processed task outputs to a mapping summary text file. Let's create the first workflow variable for the is successful general task output. This task output contains true or false, indicating whether the task ran successfully. Click the Variable column for the Is Successful output. Select the arrow, and then select New Variable. We'll enter Mapping Is Successful as the variable name, and then select Boolean as the variable type. Click OK to create the variable. Let's repeat the same steps to create the second workflow variable for the number of target rows processed task output. This task output contains an integer value indicating the total number of rows successfully written to the target. We have finished configuring the mapping task. Now let's add a command task to the workflow. A command task runs a single shell command or starts an external executable program during the workflow. Right-click the editor and select Add Workflow Object. Select Command Task and then click OK. The command task appears in the editor. On the General tab, enter a name for the command task. Informatica Naming Convention Guidelines use a CMD prefix. You can also add a description. We enter the command on the Command tab. The command syntax depends on whether the Data Integration Service runs on Unix or Windows. In this demo, the Data Integration Service runs on Windows, so we will use a valid DOS command. This command copies the specified string into a text file named mtask underscore status. Now we need to add the names of the variables assigned to the mapping task output. Select the variable 1 text. On the Inputs tab, expand the Variable folder and double-click Mapping is Successful. The developer tool adds the workflow variable using the required syntax for string fields. You can also type the variable name into the command. Let's repeat the same step to replace the variable to text in the pasted command 
with the other variable assigned to the mapping task output. We'll click Validate to verify that the command syntax is valid. Our command is valid. Now we connect the events and tasks in the workflow with sequence flows. A sequence flow connects workflow objects to specify the order that the data integration service runs the objects. Hold the cursor over the start event to display a yellow circle. Then drag the circle to the first task. Continue adding sequence flows for the rest of the workflow. Let's align the events and tasks based on the flow of data. Right-click the editor and select Align All to Grid. We need to verify that our workflow is valid. Right-click the editor and select Validate. Our workflow is valid, so we'll save the workflow. Before we can run an instance of the workflow, we must deploy the workflow to the Data Integration Service. In the Object Explorer view, right-click the workflow and select Deploy. In the Deploy dialog box, we'll select the Informatica domain. Then, we'll select the Data Integration Service that we'll deploy the application to and click Next. Enter a name for the application. Informatica Naming Convention Guidelines use an APP prefix. You can also add a description. Then click Finish. The Data Integration Service successfully deployed the workflow. You can run a single instance of the workflow immediately after you deploy it. To run additional instances of the workflow from the deployed application, use the info command WFS Start Workflow command. Let's click Run Object to run an instance of the deployed workflow. Verify that the workflow is selected and then click OK. We can monitor the workflow instance run in the Monitoring tool. We use the Progress view to launch the Monitoring tool from the Developer tool. From the menu, select Monitor Jobs. Select the Data Integration Service and click OK. The Monitoring tool opens. In the Navigator, we'll expand the application that we deployed and then select the Workflows category we can see the workflow instance that we ran in the Contents panel. Let's expand the workflow instance to view details about the tasks and the mapping. The workflow instance, tasks, and mapping all completed successfully. We can open the workflow log from the Contents panel. Select the workflow instance, right-click, and select View Logs for Selected Object. Notice that the workflow log is named with the workflow instance ID. We won't open the log in this demo. When a workflow instance includes a mapping task, the Data Integration Service generates a separate log file for the mapping. You open the mapping log in the same way. Now let's view the results of the workflow run. Both the mapping and the command task wrote to files in the default target directory located in the Informatica Services installation. We can see the Sales Transactions Customers file written by the mapping. We can also see the Mapping Summary file written by the command task. Let's open this text file. The file contains the string written by the command. The workflow variable names have been replaced with the mapping task output values. Let's return to Informatica Developer. Informatica Developer includes a cheat sheet that explains how to develop a workflow. Click Help, Cheat Sheets, and select the cheat sheet called Develop a Workflow. That completes this demo. To summarize, we created a workflow, added a mapping task to run a sample mapping, added a command task to print a summary of the mapping run to a text file, deployed and ran the workflow, monitored the workflow run, viewed the results of the workflow run. For more information on monitoring, view the demo named View Logs and Monitor. If you have feedback on this demo or to request a demo on another topic, email us at infa underscore documentation at informatica.com. You can also tweet us on the Infa Support Twitter site.